Step one, wake up, brother, gon' rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, think real hard about what you wanna be. Step four, give me. Welcome, 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 welcome to the Tales from the Field. Uh, if you are for the first time coming to Tales from the Field. Uh, we do uh, every Tuesday's roundtable conference where we highlight the data community and speak about their blogs and the videos they've made. Uh, we always put MS bits on Mondays and Wednesdays uh, where we talk about some technology. And today, uh, Andreas and me are going to be talking about Azure ML. So if you're interested, check out our new video. Hey, Andreas, what are we going to talk about today? Go ahead. Oh, Niraj, dude, we have something that's really close to my heart. Today, what we're going to talk about is how to demystify. What we're going to do is we're going to demystify building computer vision models using Azure AutoML for images. And we're going to show you how to do it in seven steps. So what wow. we're really going to go through is we're going to show you how to connect to the Azure Machine Learning Workspace. We're going to showcase how to grab your training data, create that JSON-L mm -hmm. format and ML tables. You have to put it in a format that's that the ML Studio will like. You're going to need to create your compute, you know, some compute to train the data. You're going to have to configure that auto ML object detection training job. Then from there, you're going to use ML flow, go to retrieve that best, you know, the best trial, the best model, register that best model, deploy it, and then visualize and detect. And that's what we're going to work on today. Andreas, where can we use Vision AI? I mean, what are the best cases that you can describe? Oh, there's plenty of places where you can do vision AI. You can use it to and store traffic patterns, personalization oh, for nice. retail scenarios, um, inventory management, uh, where else? Customer tracking, people counting, theft detection, wow. shopper analytics, uh, wait time analytics, cashier less stores. You know, just go in like CVS. Hey, pay for your pay for your own uh, your own items at the counter. Nice. Um, where else? Is it? Social distancing detection, drone scenarios, smart buildings, healthcare, construction, sports, analyzing athletes, the way their movements, you know, if they're efficient or not, uh, human pose tracking. I mean, the list goes on and on where you can do vision AI. So it's it's with with and vision is one of those components within we have not you know the natural language you know uh natural language programming natural language modeling with chat gpt but the vision ai it is such an important component on top of the natural language that we need to grasp you need to you know that companies are working to make it easier to track with cameras what we're doing uh, you know, just traffic patterns, security, shopper analytics, the list goes on and on. So, right. so let's, let's head towards and show them the demo. All right. I want you to do is if you go to M uh, Microsoft docs, there's great tutorials already out there. Uh, one for how to set up auto ML to train computer vision models. And mm -hmm. this document details pretty much end to end what you need to know, what types of, uh, you know, object detection, classification, multi-label, you know, scenarios we can do. What are the possibilities? Um, they also explain that you need to put the data, your training data, you're going to label that data. You have to put it in a certain format co called a JSON-L format. And they take you end to end, create your compute, how to set up a trigger, what algorithms you sh you know are, are possibly used? What is the default algorithm that a that is used in AutoML Vision? And then there's this other article for object detection with AutoML that's also in there that you're seeing. I'm going to you know, I'm, and then there's plenty of other tutorials and, and and videos out there. This one's a great one by Seth Harris. Juarez. There's also a blog out there that details what you know the the, the computer vision tasks. Um, but you can go there and discover it. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to launch my studio and let's get into it because this is where we're going to put all those articles together into one video that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so first things first, let me launch my video. What we're going to be using is this auto ML image object detection for task fridge items. If you go to Azure ML examples, we'll post those links in the video, but this, 
sample right here. This notebook is has it all end to end. But what I want to do is describe what goes on in here because it's I'm going to demystify all the mystery that's in there. And once you get this pattern down, you'll be able to go in and create your own. You'll get what's going on with an auto ML for images. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, like any like any machine learning job, we're going to connect to our Azure Machine Learning Workspace. You're going to grab some data, and we're going to create that, you know, JSON and, and JSON L and ML table format. So first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to connect, get a reference to my machine learning workspace. I'm going to import some libraries. My Azure, we're using SDK version two, mind you. There, this is mm -hmm. all being done with SDK version two. Once I have a reference and I've connected to my workspace, I'm going to go get some training data there there is already a curated you know from here you're going to see a link it's a zip file there's a curated set of data for images common images that are found inside your fridge coca-cola cans uh milk milk cartons milk uh, milk bottles water bottles fruit and what you're seeing right now is me showcasing what's in that data set and that's what we're going to use to train it this data set also comes with a bunch of annotations. And these annotations describe where the bounding box, what in bounding boxes, where what is what what we've laid, they've already labeled for us what's in that image. Now you can create all this labeling with a data labeling project within Azure ML, within Machine Learning Studio. We're not going to do that. It's already created for us. But if you wanted to go ahead and, and create your own data labeling job, it will create, it will label everything that's in that image. It will show, then you take that and then you convert it to an, 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 an ML table format. Right now, what I'm showing you is that, yes, there are some images in there. You've seen the Coca-Cola can. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is upload, once we get those images into a folder, my over on the left hand side, you'll see that images folder. I'm going to put it into a storage account. And I'm going to convert all those. Actually, let me go first to the data labeling job to show, tell you that I could have done all that annotation work through a data labeling project. And that's what you know, you have the option to doing image classification, mm -hmm. multi label classification, labeling for object identification, and you know building out polygons for instant segmentation. But we're not going to do that right now. But just know that's an important step. From there, once I've uploaded them to a storage account, I'm going to go ahead and take all those annotations and convert those into a JSON-L format file. And that JSON-L format file is what Machine Learning Studio is going to like. What you see here is all the same thing. Instead of XML, it's in J it's in JSON, and it's detailing where those bounding boxes are, where a milk carton is found, so I can train, use that data to train my model. From there, I'm going to create the ML table file. And this is it. You need an ML table file. I need a tabular format file that ML Studio will like. It has to be in tabular, tabular, for, tabular format. Step number three. I need a compute target, but note this, for vision AI, I need a GPU cluster. In order to train the data, I need to put it, I need a GPU cluster. Let me go over to my compute clusters over here and you're gonna see that I already have a GPU cluster created. So in my notebook, in my notebook right here in step number three, it's gonna say, oh, or you already have a compute instance or compute cluster called GPU cluster created, okay. It'll take that cluster, I'm going to go and start now configuring in step four my auto ML for images job. I'm going to configure it, tell it, hey, uh, use this algorithm, do this max trials, um, do max concurrent trials in parallel two times. And I'm going to submit that job to Azure Studio, to Azure, uh, Azure ML Studio. And it's going to take a while. It's going to take about, I think, uh, the first trial I did was was about um, an hour for it to, to uh, train my data. Every subsequent training goes a little bit faster. Usually, it averages between 25 to 30 minutes. We'll come back over here. Let me go to my jobs so you can see what I'm talking about here. If you go to jobs, you're going to see an, a, an experiment that was created, that I created, 
called DPV2 Images Experiment, and inside are all the jobs that I've already run. And let's look at the current, I just submitted that latest current job called Yellow Ball. That's mm -hmm. the latest current job. That's going to take a little bit of a while, you know, a couple of a good 23 to 25 minutes to, to, to uh, complete. It'll train that data again. And once it's done, it took 25 minutes, so we fast forwarded in time, you'll notice that that particular job inside that experiment completed successfully. I can walk into that job. I can see what the model, the model files, what algorithms were used, any data guardrails, you know, uh, specifications for, for my data, um, the, how long it took, all these goodies, all the diagnostics goodies that I want inside of this particular job. So let me go back a little bit. Um, and now the next step and next number five, we need to go, we're going to go and get using ML flow. We're going to go and get that particular model. We're going to say, Hey, give me the best model out of all the ex inside of that experiment. Give me the parent job and give me the best child run. That's cool. Okay. And it's going to go and say, okay, here's the best child run. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to download that best child run into my workspace. And then the next thing I'm going to do is actually, let me go back to the experiments. Let me go back here. And so you can see, yeah, it's going to take the yellow was the best trial run. I got the best precision for my model from that run. Now I get the child, best child run. Okay. I'm going to download it. And Let's run some statistics on that on that child run. And let's take a look at the precision. And we're getting good precision, about 95, you know, 0.95. I'm going to go ahead and download that locally into an artifacts folder. You're going to see that artifacts folder on the left-hand side being created. And it should download that right around let's go let's do a refresh give me a second there it is there's that artifacts folder it's going to download all the all the, the model file all its dependencies everything that i need inside that folder and once we're done downloading it and creating that artifacts downloaded folder we're going to register that model Cool. Okay. So this is a these are common steps. Same pattern. Create your compute, train your model, download, you know, register your model, you know, take a look at the best job, the parent, you know, the parent job, the child job within there that gave me the best precision. Now, final steps. We're in the home stretch. We need to create an online endpoint. And we're going to configure that online endpoint. We're going to configure it. Creating an online endpoint is going to take a little bit. You know, let's let's submit that. But what we'll, we want to get some inference from this model, and we want it to live somewhere. And that where it's going to live is it can live in an, a managed online endpoint that Microsoft is in charge of. I can put this in a container instance. I can put this in a compute in an Azure Kubernetes instance. So. Actually, what you're show, I'm showing right now before I get there is the model. Okay, there's that model, and I'm going to deploy that. I've registered it inside the model registry. I'm going to go ahead and now deploy my endpoint, and it took 40 minutes for that deployment to you know finish. So it, I have a, a, a place where that my model can be deployed and it can live, and I can send in images and it can give me some real-time inference if I wanted to. This is this endpoint. I'm also directing 100% of the traffic to that particular endpoint. Now, cool thing about endpoints is that if, you know, side topic is you can create what's called A and B testing, A and B scenarios, where can, I can have multiple endpoints and I can send 50% of the traffic to one endpoint and 50% of the traffic to another endpoint if I wanted to. But right now I'm sending all the traffic to one endpoint and there's that rest endpoint where I'm going to send in my images. Okay. Uh, beautiful. It looks like we're all tidy here. I'm going to get some endpoint details about the rest endpoint. 
where it's living. And now, let's go ahead. Now we're in the last 100 meters. We're going to test this out. What we're going to set, we're create is a request JSON body output, you know, a format. We're going to send it into that rest endpoint. We're basically going to send in an image to that rest endpoint. That once we hit that rest endpoint, it's going to push it into the model and it's going to give me back some inference. It's going to give me back some object detection telling me what's on that image. Is it a milk carton? Is it a Coke? Is it a, an apple, an orange, a banana? So we're going to create it, you know, that, that request JSON, pass it in, that response, pass it into that REST endpoint. Beautiful. And finally, the last 10 hundred meters, we're going to get some visualized detections. So cool. as you can see right now, we passed in a milk carton. It's giving me a bounding box. It's telling me, voila, you do have a milk carton in there. It brought out a label saying, Hey, it's a milk carton. Let's double test this. Let's do it again. Let's send in another image and create another request JSON file. Uh, a, uh, a response, request JSON response. We'll pass that in, set up those variables. And we're almost there. Let's visualize the detection. And the model should give us back its prediction or its object detection saying, well, you know, let's play again. Let me do that again. Sent in that image. And I have a carton yeah. and a water bottle in there. And it's nice. putting the bonding bonds. It's pretty cool, huh? Just maintain those seven bubbles in the top, in your head, how easy it is to implement AutoML for images using in, inside of Machine Learning Studio. Connect to your Azure Workspace. Mm -hmm. Get your data. Train that data. Actually, before that, label that data appropriately. Create your compute. You need a GPU cluster. You need to put that data into an ML table format. So ML Studio likes it and AutoML likes it. You're going to configure it, run your data, train it. Um, then after that, we need to go get our best uh, model, the one with the best precision. We'll use MLflow for that. We'll go and register that model into the registry. We'll then test it, validate it, visualize, put it into an endpoint, and then I can reuse. Rinse and now rinse, I, my friend. What do you think? Now I can check what's in my fridge every day. <laughs> <laughs> that, that should be cool. Yeah. Check all those uh, seltzer waters you got in there. Hope yeah. you liked it. Hope this comes in handy to all you uh, watching in there. I think 13 minutes of your time and grab this sample, throw it in there, put it as part of your repository. Mm -hmm. Remember, Vision AI is used in so many scenarios. It's an um, up and coming sector of, of, of AI. Go ahead and use it. If you, and if you like it, like and subscribe us on our YouTube channel. Thank you, everyone. Wake up, brother, gonna rise in the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three.